Hello folks, welcome back to another Wise Game video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Shadowlands. What we're actually going to be discussing and covering in today's video is the pre-patch. The pre-patch finally comes live today, at the date of this video, which is 10-13-2020. Now, before we move on and take a deeper look, I also want to mention, for players that are not aware of this, is that Blizzard did cancel the original release date for Shadowlands. And they have not released the actual new date yet, but they are still claiming it should be in the year 2020. So what we're going to cover in today's video is actually what is there to do once you stop playing the pre-patch. Because we have to keep in mind that it's only a pre-patch, it's not actual Shadowlands. So we're not going to have the new zones, and we're not going to be level 60 yet. But there is still quite a bit involved when it comes to the pre-patch for Shadowlands. So that's what we're going to start taking a look at. So let's get started with Shadowlands pre-patch and what is involved. So upon logging into the game when they release the pre-patch, one of the first things you're going to notice is the level squish. So for characters that are 120 on Battle for Azeroth are now going to be squished down to level 50. And then each level bracket after that will even be squished even more. So I think that like a level 100 on Battle for Azeroth will now be like around level 40 to 45. So here's a few charts right here. We can see that the chart to the top right or the table, that gives you an idea exactly which a level bracket is going to be squished down to. And then down to the bottom left, is the information that involves level revamping. I will provide links in the description panel of today's video so you can look at all the information in detail. They also gave a brand new facelift to the character customization screen. So once we come in here we could see that it looks totally different than it has in the past expansions and more customization options when it comes to changing the shape of your face, things along that lines, when it comes to the color of your eyes, your eyebrows, so on and so forth. Now once the pre-patch does hit later on today, and we go to our local barber shop, you're also going to have these customization options now within the barber shop, which you can use on all level characters now, even your level 50s. Still not sure what's giving me that green outline though. Now at one time Blizzard did offer in the shop where we could go and pay a small fee and we could have changes done to our characters. They did away with that now in Shadowlands because they made it now where these options are available now right at the barber shop. Now it's time to start our adventure. So for newly made characters, level 1s, veteran players, and new players to the game, they are going to have this option once they log into the game for the first time on that newly made tune. So the options here is Exile's Reach, and then there's another option depending on the race that you're playing. So seeing my character is a human, I'm getting Northshire Valley to show for my option. Now the difference here is that veteran players, which are players that have been playing the game right along, and they made characters in Battle Fazerop, will get both options. Whereas a brand new player to the game will only have Exile's Reach. But I do advise anybody starting off at this level to pick Exile's Reach, because this is going to be the new eye candy in addition to the pre-patch. For veteran players that are going to play a lower level character, say like a level 10, 15, or whatnot, after the squish, they are probably most likely going to start off in their major capital cities. But now for all players in both factions that pick Exile's Reach, you will start on a ship that takes you out to Exile's Reach, and then you're going to start your quest line. And this quest line will start at level 1, and eventually end at level 9 or 10. But now keep in mind, once you're sent out to Exile's Reach, there is no way of returning back for newly made characters. 
And then eventually, at the very end, after you do the quest line, it's going to send you into a dungeon. Once you complete that dungeon, you're now going to exit Exile's Reach. And then you will either arrive at Battle for Azeroth areas, or you will arrive at the Classic Zones. Because they did a level squish to our characters, they also had to do one for the zones. So, for example, a place like Battle for Azeroth areas, which was like level 110 to 120, is now going to be scaled down to your appropriate level. And the same is going to go for equipment and items. Now, also, when we first log into the game, once the pre-patch is actually added, we're going to see this message appear. Letting us know about Death Rising and a few of the other changes and implements. Next, we're going to look at the new addition that they added to the game, also called Time Walking. Time Walking is an awesome addition to the game. And what this is going to provide for us in the pre patch is going back to different zones or different expansions within the game. And this opens up between levels 10 and 49. It will only be available after you do a series of the chain quests. Unless they're going to change this for the actual pre-patch. I'm going by the public test realm. So what we had to do on the public test realm is we had to go back to our capital cities once we left Exile's Reach. We had a few handful of quests to do in our capital city. And then we were sent back out to battle for Azeroth. And basically, what they're making the game into is a tutorial when it comes to brand new players to the game, teaching them how the game operates. So now, once you approach Chromie, and again, on the public test realm, there was no breadcrumb trails leading you to Chromie. And there was also no quest implemented leading you to Chromie. But each capital city for both factions will have Chromie. So Stormwind for the Alliance and Ogama for the Horde which will send you now to different expansions that you wanted to play again, Wrath of the Lich King, Cataclysm, as we see right here in the list, where soon you will achieve level 50. So now let's take a look at what to expect at level 50 for Shadowlands Pre-Patch. Now once level 50, and again for level 120s on Battle for Azeroth, that's going to get squished down to level 50, for new players and veteran players, the gameplay is pretty much the same. We are all eventually going to get a quest to pop up that's going to kick off the Shadowlands pre-patch. And this quest is called an Urgent Request. And this is both given to both factions, the Alliance and the Horde. This is what's going to kick off the major quest line for the pre-patch. So for the Alliance, you're going to report to Gen Grayman at Lion's Rest in Stormwind City, which he will have the quest and urgent request, which will eventually take you here, as we see in this image, in Stormwind City. And don't worry if you're a Horde player, I got you guys covered also. Now, at the start of this quest line, eventually it's going to take us now where we have to go to some of the earlier zones in the game. So, for the Alliance, you're going to be doing some in Lakeshire, and then also in Duskwood, and some of those areas. And what most of these quests are involved in is the Scourge. And then for the Horde, it's the same name for you guys too, an Urgent Request, which is going to eventually take you on top of Gramash Hold in Ogama. How the heck did these gaming companies come up with these names? And then eventually the Horde 2 is going to have a few quests in the earlier zones, and then we're all eventually going to end up getting a quest to go out to ICC, which is Ice Crown which if it's going to be the same starting area as it was on the public test realm, it's where the tournament grounds are. And then eventually they're going to send us to other areas of Ice Crown, and we're going to be mainly battling the Scourge. And the last time that I fought them, they weren't too, too difficult. 
And then it's going to give us this quest called Advancing the Effort. Which is now going to enable it where the invasions are going to happen. Now this is something that I read that is not going to happen right away. It may be a week or two after the actual pre-patch is released. And then we'll be able to do, once we complete this quest line, we'll be able to do the dailies out in Ice Crown to do with the Scourge. And then once you complete all the quests out here at Ice Crown, you should eventually get a quest to take you back to your capital city. And then that's pretty much it for the quest line to do with Shadowlands Pre-Patch. So now we achieve level 50, we finish the quest line. What else is there for us to do with the Pre-Patch? Again, eventually there will be the dailies. And then as we see here, they're adding class changes. So it's a great time to check out these class changes and get ready for when Shadowland actually gets released. What about heirloom gears that we used to call back in the day BOAs? The changes that they made to the heirloom armor is just armor sets. So just having one piece of this gear will not really give you any advantages. Or say if you just had the weapon, the weapons aren't even included in the armor sets. And this also holds true for trinkets. So what is involved in the armor sets? Well, we got a heirloom chest piece, helm, shoulders, cloak, legs, necklace, and ring. Now let's take a closer look at how this is actually going to work. For a two set, you're going to have rested experience consumed is reduced by 30%. So your rested experience is actually going to last a little bit longer. For a four piece set, it's going to increase your auto combat regeneration in outdoors, normal dungeons and battlegrounds. Which is nice, meaning you won't always have to take the time out now to sit and eat. Next is the five piece set. Gaining a level triggers burst of knowledge, dealing X holy damage to nearby enemies and granting you 40% of your primary stat for two minutes. Defeating additional enemies extends this effect up to two minutes more. And for the six gear set, your rested experience is reduced by up to 30%. Meaning again, your rested experience will be that much longer. And heirloom set bonus effects only works for characters from level 1 to 50. And now I'm going to try to wrap up the last few implements pretty quickly. So transmog improvements. So what we see here is mainly for wands. So mages and warlocks can transmog wands to daggers and swords. Priests can transmog wands to one hand maces and daggers. That's good to know, seeing one of my mains is usually a Warlock. And again, I will be adding links to the guides that I've used in aid of making this video. So you can read more information about exactly what's going on and the changes to Shadowlands. Okay, next, this is a pretty big change. I think a lot of you guys are going to be happy with this. Pathfinder in Shadowlands and Pre-Patch. So basically, if anybody wanted to get flying in Warlords of Draenor areas and legions, this is now your chance to actually do it without getting Pathfinder. You will be able to now fly in these areas once you achieve Expert Riding. So again, all you need to do is get that Expert Riding, which is just buying it, basically. But you don't have to do these achievements any longer to get flying in both these areas. Now, in beta, some players say, yeah, but how about Battle for Azeroth? Well, right now, Battle for Azeroth is still part of this pre-patch. So, they're not going to make a lot of things easier right now for Battle for Azeroth. Then there's going to be some changes with the pre-patch when it comes to allied races. So, allied race requirement unlocks. All allied races will be easier to unlock in the Shadowlands pre-patch. The requirement to hit Exalted with a related faction has been removed. Meaning that it only leaves you where you have to get the requirement to complete a related series of zone quests. And feel free to pause the video right here if you'd like to read the list. 
And last on our list today for today's video is what is removed in the Shadowlands pre-patch. Again, feel free to pause the video here to read the list. Blizzard states we have an entire guide dedicated to content removed in the pre-patch. And also game launch. Now again, on the date that I made this video, and I'm going to try to post it tonight if I can, is the same date again that they're releasing the pre-patch for Shadowlands. But by the time that I do post this, you guys will probably already have this information, but they're not releasing the pre-patch until later on today. So if you're trying to log into the game and you're still 120 and all that, that's the reason why. I heard that it should be around 3 p.m. Pacific time. But I believe that we did cover mostly important changes and what to expect in this pre-patch. Again, I will provide the links in the description panel of today's video for the guides that I use to give you more information. So all that's left to do now, guys, is fire up the game once they come out with the actual pre-patch, and we'll see you guys then. Feel free to sub up for more future videos, and comment down below, because as always, we love to hear from you. Until then, you guys have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.